Hello, I'm Robert Jones with Image Perfection. Um, I promised you a video, on another video, I promised you a video that if you had a certain kind of high definition TV, I can show you how to keep it safe on its way to being fixed. Because if you don't treat it right on its way to being fixed, it could die on you. So this is that video. Does your set have an occasional blue flash? Does it have uh, fluctuating brightness? Does it maybe lose the picture every now and then? Maybe lose the sound every now and then? Maybe not turn on at all? These are all symptoms of cold solder joints on your power supply board. They're called intermittents. I'm going to tell you what models are affected here. And just listen up, see if yours is one of these. The this is the CRT Pioneer Elite line from back in year 2000, 2001, 2002. Still good TVs. These are 20-year service life sets. There's only halfway through their service life, so they're really valuable. Uh, the Pro 510 HD, the Pro 610 HD, the Pro 710 HD. Also, their non-elite brothers, the SD532 HD5 and the SD642 HD5. Now, in the following model year, Halfway through the year, they changed power supply boards. So the first half of the model year, they still had the same power supply boards as the year before. So that means they, they all had this issue. And the last half of the year, they didn't. They, they redesigned the board and stuck it on the floor. So if you want to know whether yours is affected, if you have a model in that second model year, go to the back of your TV, follow the power cord where it goes into your set, and look up there in the ventilation holes and see if there's a, a circuit board that you can see that's vertically mounted against the bulkhead of the set. If so, that's the board in question. If not, your board is floor mounted. It doesn't have these issues. It was a newly designed board. The solder on that was fine. But the solder on the boards in question was way too thin. There may be other issues too, but I know for sure it was way too thin because when I resolder them, I easily triple the amount of solder on these boards. They need it. They're thirsty for it. What happens with a cold solder joint is that as it heats up and cools down with uh, turn on and turn off, the leg goes through the hole, gets soldered to the pad, it expands, contracts, expands, contract, expand, contract. And I'll tell you, if you use your set once a day for a year, that alone is 365 cycles. In 10 years, you're talking about 3,650 cycles. That's a lot of expansion, contract, expansion, contraction. Okay? So, luckily enough, this is the only board in the set that does that. This doesn't apply to any other board in that set, and this is not an issue with other brands either. So, luckily enough, we take care of this one board we're in. Now, if you have that second model year, the second model year that I talked about is the Pioneer Pro 520 HD, Pro 620 HD, Pro 720 HD, those are the elites, and the non-elites are the SD533 HD5 and the SD643 HD5. Now this started happening when the sets got to be about four years old, and it's been happening ever since, so we never know how long it takes for these cold solder joints to finally start going so bad that it starts appearing as an issue. All right. Uh, when I solder these boards, I re solder them, I test them in the Pioneer 610 that I have out for testing there. I run them out for a while and then I give you a worldwide lifetime warranty on my work so you never have to worry about this again. They're very hardy boards, they're the heart of your set, they go everywhere in your set. They supply power to everywhere in your set. So this is, the, and, and luckily enough, being a hardy board, there's no domino effect. This is, this is an amazing thing about the design of this board. There's no domino effect if something goes bad, if something gets disconnected. It doesn't cause something to blow up farther down on the board. The board stays good. As soon as they get resoldered, they're good for, from then on, forever. That's why I give a lifetime warranty on it. So what you got to do, now this is the hard part. What you got to do is if you have a board that's affected like this, or is going to be affected like this and hasn't yet, but you remember this video and you come back to it, you got to start using, stop using your set. You can't keep watching video on it. You can't even let it warm up to normal operating temperature even once until it gets fixed properly. The reason for that is because the 
farther down line, cold solder joints are the dangerous ones. They're the ones that are going to damage something. They're going to make your set, you know, they're, they're going to send a lightning bolt down into your set. The early cold solder joints, they're kind of like a warning shot across the bow. You can see the fluctuations, you can see the intermittence, you, you know. If you catch it early, if your set turns on from dead cold with no problem at all, and these issues only start happening after it warms up, you're in good shape. Then you can send the board to me, I can fix it, I can lifetime warranty it. If you don't, if, if you feel like you've got some chops on soldering, and, but you're not real experienced, so you only want to do a few of them, and you find those that are bad now, and you, you resolder those, you're setting yourself for, up for damage later. You're setting yourself up for a fall, because the later ones are the ones that are dangerous. So the only way to fix this issue properly is to completely resolder the whole board. The only things you cannot worry about are the heat sinks. You don't need to do those. Anything that was resoldered before by Pioneer, before they actually put the unit out, you don't have to worry about those. There are a few of them. And the test points. Those are the things you don't have to worry about. Everything else on that board has to be resoldered. It takes forever. It takes, it's, it's, it's a tedious job, but somebody's got to do it. Okay, so if you're not a professional in the field, please don't even try. There's far too much writing on it. It's like needed dental work. It's not going to get better on its own. So I want to show you something. This is one of the boards in question. Notice the big power transformer, the huge heat sink, other heat sinks, heat sink, 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 heat sink. Raised power resistors. Big, big resistors raised way off the board for ventilation purposes. A couple here, there. This board produces lots and lots of heat. That's why we have this issue of the expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction, and, and eventually a, a cold solder joint forms. Now take a look at this. I want you to look at the luster of this board. It's very flat. There is, it isn't very shiny. I'm going to get closer so you can see what I'm talking about. These solder joints are dull and lifeless. Now, let's look at a board that I've resoldered. Very different picture. Shiny, bright, gleaming. Let's get in close. Now these solder joints are never going to go out. A lifetime warranty. It. So that's what the board looks like. Let's see what a solder joint looks like. These are actual pictures taken by me of boards that have been sent to me. Uh, let me get the pointer. <clears throat> you can see here that crack there, that is on its way to going 360. There's one here too. On this IC, IC204, which operates the convergence ICs, all five of these legs have cold solder joints. Here, 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 and here, especially here. On this set, all five of these have the halo. It's not advanced yet, but it's going to be. There's no way that is not going to go out later. It's only a matter of time. Here are a couple that have gone out big time. And as you can see, there's black here. Now the brown, don't worry about it. That's resin. That's fine. But the black means they actually sparked this one and this one. That can be dangerous. Here's a couple more shots. This one and this one. Here's a close-up of that 
really bad one. Look at this incredible crevasse here. And you can see that it's actually started to curl up a little bit. Here's one where the pin has actually raised itself up off the board. And that's actually a, a gap right here. And it's obviously completely 360. <coughs> Here's one that is not really bad yet, but it's not trustworthy in the least. It's on its way to going bad. There's no going back. Now, at other parts of the board, you can see solder joints that I've done because I interrupted my soldering to take these pictures. These joints will never go out. They're nice and rounded. They're gleaming and glossy. You know, you're not going to have a problem with those cold, with those solder joints. Those are not cold solder joints. Here's some more that are ready to go. Here's a whole row. Starting with this one. Now this one isn't too bad yet. But as you as we go down the row here, you can see the little circle around each of those legs, the little halo. Almost all of them have it. So eventually all of them will have it. And then here's a close-up of the most prominent one in that row. There's no mistaking that crack there. And this is what's happening all over the board. If it hasn't happened yet, it's on its way to happening. So you can't just fix what's bad now. In fact, technicians out there shouldn't fix what's bad now and give it back to you. It's irresponsible. You have to you have, this, have this thing last. You have to do the whole board. I've even been sent boards from that, that Pioneer has rebuilt. And I have to treat them like normal boards because Pioneer didn't do it the way I do it either. The only way to do it, so it'll last, and it'll be a permanent fix, is the way I do it. Now, if you're a professional in the field, you know your stuff, go for it. You'll fix your board. Terry Whitener did that. Terry Whitener has three videos on this channel in YouTube. Look him up. He did his own 720. Still working. And then he had me down to do the rest, but he got the thing stabilized again. So, I want you to know, I will be here. I'm not going anywhere. I want these sets to last. I want to fix as many of these as I can, and as many need fixed, I will be here to fix them. If you want to reach me, you can reach me at projectiontvtroubleshooting.com, no, projectiontvtroubleshootingadvice.com, that's my blog, or at my, at, uh, my email, bob at imageperfection.com. So thanks for listening. Hope we'll be in touch.